Hi guys, I'm Danny, and I started a Sunday gym because I've noticed lately that people tend to go to colleges and universities without actually knowing why they're there. And afterwards, starting jobs are room fulfilling. So I'm interviewing different professionals to see what they have to say and share their knowledge and experience with you. I hope you enjoy it. Pretty good. Right on. Glenn, thanks for being with me. How are you doing, man? Doing very well. Doing very well. It's amazing and it's sunny and it's warm. So we all should be doing very well. Yes. Uh, pro <laughs> program will be focused on three main questions. What do you do for a living? How did you get there? And how did you know that this was the way to go? So that's what you do for a living, please. Well, currently I am an author and a speaker and I travel the country talking to police departments and other people about communication and relationships after traumatic events because can you um, speak a little bit louder for me please yes um i currently um okay i'm a speaker and an author and i currently travel talking to people um about communication and relations after traumatic events um, because we all shut down and that doesn't work and it doesn't help us heal and it definitely is detrimental to relationships if we do, if we shut down and don't talk. Um, anyway, I, I learned this the hard way because I was a police officer and a detective for 26 years. I shut down. I didn't share things. I got PTSD. And then I ended up divorced, bankrupt, and lost everything. I had to rebuild myself. And after rebuilding myself, now I'm able to have a good relationship. I have a wonderful relationship with a beautiful lady, and we've been together 10 years now. So uh, we have no secrets. And sometimes she tells me I'm too open. I share too much. But I always ask her, "Would you want? do you want me to change that? She goes, oh, no, absolutely not. So um, that's what I talk about now. And then I say I, I wrote one book on that that's published. And I've written a fiction that I have two publishers that want. I'm in the final editing on that and, and the testing phases. And I found out I like to write. That's it's pretty solid. Uh, you know, uh, th there should be a, I, I'm, I'm owing total of people healing. Because, uh, yeah, this is something, by the way, that I've noticed for police officers in the EU and uh and in the United States now, I've never been to the States, but I'm talking to a lot of people. So, you know, every now and then that, that, that's a topic that, you know, pops out. And uh, yeah, they, there is tremendous amount of stress. And not to mention that I've mentioned it here, probably I've mentioned it elsewhere as well. You know, because uh, in the end of the day, you're just as, as, as much of a man, as much of a guy as I am. Now, I'm an accountant and a financial analyst. Let's say I commit a fraud and uh, they catch me and, and they, they'll send me to jail, you know, because that's how you're supposed to do it. And you're going to open the newspaper. You're like, okay, so Danny Jam committed a fraud. And okay, well, you know, set here. And you will just move on. But every time a police officer does something, all hell breaks loose. And I've talked to people and they, they've said, well, you see, Danny, that's a figure of authority. No, it's it's not. I understand what they mean, but I just don't accept it. And I don't want to, you know, to diminish a police officer or to trash talk them. But a, a figure of authority or not, one way or another, in the end of the day, you're, you're as much of a, of a guy as I am. And uh, I am susceptible to evil, and so are you. Uh, and, and by you, of course, I don't mean just you. I'm, I, I, I'm talking to everybody. But, you know, people are ju just fixated on that and it's insane not to mention wrong and and super unhelpful now ever since i was a kid i was told that you know if you have a problem and and I mean you should you know fix it but you know don't bitch about it don't don't complain about it but at the end you just cannot just keep it all inside you because this is evil and, and we are fighting evil and if you keep evil inside you well what do you think will happen so what you are doing is a tremendous work and uh and and uh it really matters and i guarantee you now i personally have never been in that situation you've been so you know exactly what you're talking about but i personally have seen it and you're right about that it destroys lives but not, not only that it destroys families and you know that that's not always fixable it's not always, but it's the only way it is fixable is if we look deep inside and start with ourselves. Yeah. 
and that was where I made my changes was I, I went through some training and some self enhancement things and I lived by myself at my cabin for three years. And, and during that time, I had to take a deep, hard look at what was I doing. And once I changed me, then I was able to have good relationships. Because um, most of us, well, you know, we're guys. And what are we taught as we're kids growing up or boys growing up? I don't need man. about this. I can handle this. You're a man. Suck it up. Yep. And that's that's garbage. <laughs> it's garbage. Not necessarily. Well, to a point, but yeah. most of us go over the top. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. For help. And without without assistance, we're not going to survive this. Um, you know, I, I ended up with PTSD. And my first marriage, I never told my wife stuff that was going on at work because I didn't want her to worry. Yeah. And I didn't talk to anybody. Back then, if we said we wanted therapy or counseling, they'd fire us and find us unfit for duty. And so we just kept our mouth shut until pretty soon I was having nightmares four or five times a month. And things were just building up and building up. And there was an instant burst of anger at, yeah. that were unfounded. It shouldn't have been there. For, but look at my kids. I'd come home and they'd say something and they didn't really mean anything, but it would just set me off. And then I back off, go, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. But it was too late. So, you know, I luckily I've rebuilt my relationships with my kids and they, they was always pretty good. But now it's so much better. No, children um, by them, by far, children love their fathers. Like, yes. like there is this. I don't know how to explain it because I'm not a father, but, but but I am a son. I grew up with my father and my mother, of course. So, uh, you know, it's like that special relationship, that that warm feeling, even at adults. Because, uh, you know, I'm an adult. I really don't want to talk about my mother right? or with her <laughs> unless I have to. Uh, but, you know, you kind of have you keep that relationship, not much, not as father son or father daughter relationship, but as friends if, with, with your dad. It's somehow it's possible. Yes. Yes. I mean, my dad's 88 now and I, you know, I'm going to go down and spend the month of February he lives in where it's warm, so to, that's that's an added thing. But I'm going to go down and spend the month of February in the area and just hang out with him because I may not be able to do it next year. He may not be here. You yeah. know, he's getting to that age, and so that's that's the things that we look forward with our our parents. You know, my mom passed, and um, you know that makes it that's that that hurts, but she's in a better place now. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm still able to have that good relationship with my father. That's pretty, uh, pretty important, pretty impressive. Uh, you've mentioned how, because I was brought the same way, you know, tough it up, be a man. Yeah. And yeah, to, to an extent, they are absolutely 100% correct. Now, however, keep in mind that that's an advice given to us by people who lived in a completely different time. Oh, yeah. Right now, there are, and I've been taught a few things myself. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard that too. Your wife is supposed to know three things: that there's food in the fridge, roof over the head, and a bed in the bedroom where she can sleep. You know that that's what you share with her. I understand why they gave me that advice. Now, keep in mind that advice was given to me by a person who worked in the same place for forty years. That was my grandfather. He died now. So, you know, when you work at the same place, when you work, live, you know, do everything at the same place for 40 years, 40 is a long time. Yes. Your life kind of becomes rooted over there. You don't know what's at the other side. Now, when he was growing up, there was no such thing as internet. The, the, there was, you know, media and stuff like that, but it was so corrupt and absurd. Now that it isn't today, but still... It's not something you pay attention to. So they they gave us that advice because they really didn't knew better. The world is so dynamic right now and so many things are happening. It's it's insane. And a communi good communication is very important because you may have missed something. She may not. And, and she can add on to that. So that's pretty impressive. And uh, I I'm really happy that you were able to level it up a little bit. 
Well, I'm laughing because, man, I've had the same thoughts on those the world. Uh, a lot of people I dealt with and I, at work were in the poor segment of society. Yeah. And they had, what I discovered on a couple cases was they had lack of education, lack of world experience, and then lack of money, which prevented them from doing anything, much of anything. So they very rarely even got out of the neighborhood they were in. And by not getting out of the neighborhood, I got, man, I, I am so grateful for the life I've had because I have been able to travel the world. I have been able to go see things and suddenly it changed my whole view of things by, with that opportunity. And they, and a lot of these people never get that opportunity. Um, you know, my, like you say, back in that day, 30, 40 years at the same job, that was expected. You know, now I could go out and find a job. In fact, I, you know, I go still go to work every now and then part-time. Um, they call me when they're shorthanded and, and I go in, but that's not what I want to be doing. But then again, I, this last year, uh, or two last two years traveling and speaking, I've gone to segments of the country I had never been in. And, and they're, you know, I, I don't know about over there, but you know, the United States is huge. It's yeah. Huge. It's half the continent. Oh, and I, I never had been in one middle, the middle part very much. I mean, at all. And so now I've got to go to Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan. Um, and, Oh, Wisconsin, throw that one in there. And it's an amazing experience to see, number one, how similar people are, but how different they are. Yeah. And and, and it's just, as I go through, it's just a blast um, to see things and, and deal with people. But again, that's all through communication, because I'm not afraid to go talk to anybody. <laughs> My wife now tells me I'm too open. I share too much. But I asked her, I said, do you want me to shut down and not? And she said, oh, no, absolutely not. Stay the way you are. No, not to mention you're at a good place. So even if there is like evil around you, they want to use that for bad purposes. Because, you know, there are bad people out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah let, let, let them. at the end of the day, the, the truth always comes to, uh, comes on top. So that's pretty good. Uh, I love how you mentioned about different places and uh, how similar yeah, different people are. I graduated in Denmark. And right next to my place, there was this family, like, you know, a husband, a wife, an older son. I think he was about 17, something, almost 18, and a younger son. And now he was a kid. He was maybe five, six years old, something like that. And because, you know, we, we shop at the same place, right? It's just house to house. And I was like, how, 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 how are things at home? They were like, well, my little brother is sick right now. And I was, it, it's, it's like an instinct for me. I said, well, you know, God be with him, man. I really mean it. Now, what I didn't know, because, I, you know, you can sense malice in the voice or evil, but, but you know, you can sense when there isn't there. So the thing is, I didn't know that, but, you know, up there in that region, God be with you is something you use as a term when someone is dead or dying. Oh, oh. Yeah. And I didn't mean it that. I, first of all, I didn't know. And, and I've never used that phrase over there <laughs> since I learned, but yeah, he was like shocked. So, uh, it, it, and those are like small experiences that are staying with you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, and that's like, um, cops, you know, they, they go to work and, and we are people. I mean, yeah. that's all, that's all we are, but we chose to do a job. And unfortunately in this job, we deal with bad people or good people having a really bad day. Yeah, because if you're not having a bad day, you wouldn't be dealing with me, <laughs> you know, and, and that's why, you know, I, I look at the traumatic things. I look at the things that happened to me and the things I witnessed, like, you know, pulling a child out of a pond and doing CPR and trying to save their life. And when you're not able to do and succeed at that, it, it rips you up. Um, kids are the hardest and, you know, and things like that. And I've had so many things happen that. um you know, if I didn't talk about them, I finally actually went and got a counselor on my own and, and talked um, after I had a gun pulled on me and shot. And that one, you know, those things stick with you. Yeah, oh, they always do. Yeah. And society today after uh, COVID, I worked at a hospital during COVID and that was heart wrenching when people are in there and they can't see their loved one who's dying. And that the person that's dying can't see their family. 
I mean that you know when and when your whole life just revolves around your family, how hard would that be? I mean, it was horrible. And those are things that we just, you know, we just, ah, okay, let's move on. But you can't really just move on. They stick with you. True. Although I'm really like in favor of moving on, although I lost good people because of that. Yeah. So, you know, you, you just try to move on. But I, I guess time heals all, all wounds. But yeah, it, it, it stays with you. It, yeah. it really does. So, yeah. Time softens those wounds. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but you know, like I say, life's amazing. People are actually amazing. I, um, I think most people are good. Um, and that's unusual for, you know, I did 26 years as an officer and a detective and most people that I know are rather jaded at that point in time. And I'm grateful for the changes because, you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm positive. I think most people are really, are good. And do they make mistakes? Oh, yeah, but I can't complain because so do I. Mistakes were made by, honestly, as far as I know, there was only one human being that was born perfect, didn't make any mistakes. Yep. yep. But I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Uh, so, yeah, and yet he paid the ultimate price so that even now, when you and I and everybody else, when we make a mistake, we, we can be forgiven for those mistakes. So yeah, when, when when somebody tells me I'm not perfect, I know you're not, and I'm, I'm not. I one was. So well, that aside, I now, I now look at mistakes as learning opportunities. Yeah, because I I can figure something out about it and change me. My but father used to say that you know, because do whatever you want for a job, but as long as you're not defusing bombs, you can afford to make mistakes. <laughs> If you are diffusing, but well, you can make you can afford to make one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not too catastrophic. <laughs> absolutely, you kind of covered the second question because because what you're doing now is very related to what you used to do. Yeah. Now about the third, uh, how did you knew that this was the way to go? Now the reason I'm asking, and I, I noticed you've noticed that too. Um, a lot of people nowadays, and I've heard some crazy statistics last week tend to go to colleges, universities, just to get the diploma to secure the future, right? To make the future better. Now, the only reason a diploma is needed so that a future employer can know that for about four, maybe five, six years, you were there on time, mostly. You know how to handle a deadline and uh, you have at least somewhat of a discipline. It's not going to secure your future. And I'm not trash talking universities because I kind of caught hell one time in the comment section. I went to college, I went to university, got a mess. I, I know what I'm talking about. Now, I heard or I read last week, I don't remember which, because uh, I do both a lot, uh, that 70% of law graduates in in the EU, maybe 65, 70% are not practicing law once they graduate, which wow. is frightening. Uh, there was a professor on my channel. He was a guest on my podcast. He told me that over 80%, he, I mean, he was teaching chemistry, right? <laughs> over 80% are not doing this. Once, I mean, okay, fine, chemistry, like... I wouldn't want that either. There is a book about chemistry that I keep it under my my pillow. Because if I can't sleep, I just open it, look at it, and I'm asleep immediately. <laughs> so I I don't approve it, but I guess I can understand it. But this is crazy. And you know, you've been a police officer for quite some time. You are a gifted speaker. You know how to write books. You could have done a lot of things, but you decided to go with that one. Why exactly? Because yeah, you highlighted the trauma that you had that you were able to heal yourself. So helping others is a noble cause, but you could have done a million different things, but you decided to go with that one. Was it a gut feeling? Were you, how, how did you decide to do that one? It was kind of an interesting journey. I uh, actually applied for federal law enforcement like the FBI. And is when I, after I applied, I, I, my first three years in college, I uh, kind of played too much. I know. And I, 
I discovered life, girls, alcohol, you know, things that I had not discovered prior to that. And um, I, pl I partied my way out. I went back years later. I had to have a degree to apply for federal law enforcement. And I went back years later, finished my degree. I had to pull straight A's for two and a half years to get my GP, my grade point average up to where it was acceptable. And I did it. Um, and I found what my, I found my niche where I wanted. And that was in psychology. And that's what I got my degree in. Well, then I applied and they disqualified me because I have sugar diabetes. And back then you could do that. They can't do that now. Um, so I, I had finally looked into some things and I knew law enforcement was where I wanted to be. I just, my heart, I went with my heart. And I, um, so a friend of mine came up and said, Hey, the local, there's a local department hiring. Why don't you apply? So I applied. We had 500 applicants for three positions, three positions. It was pretty tough back then to get yeah. in. <laughs> and, uh, I, I was lucky and was one of the ones selected. Um, so yeah, I don't think I had, I had anything to do with that because well, I, I, I don't I, think that Maybe I'm wrong, of course, but you know, 500 applicants that, how many of them had your background? I'm not talking about law enforcement background. Obviously all of them did, but the, the other part that you added on, how, how many of them had that? Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I worked hard. Um, and I, so I get to take a little credit. And that's something I guess we're taught is uh, we get a, we are afraid to talk well about ourselves because it's, yeah. it's, it's bragging or something like that. And that's, uh, it's not really bragging when it's true. And I'm a firm believer of prayer without work is not going to work. And work without prayer is not going to get you far. You, you you have to keep them together. Yeah, you're, 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 you're preaching to the choir on that one. Yeah, I was talking to a <laughs> dude a while ago and like, we, you know, you know uh, we, we should live in heaven like Adam and Eve. Like they didn't, they, they weren't living in heaven. They were living in the Garden of Eden. Like, yeah. Yeah, they had it all. And I was like, if you actually read the scripture, you would have known that they were actually working. They weren't lying around all day watching TV. <laughs> God That's, plus yeah. channel. That, that yeah. never happened. <laughs> Adam had a construction job and Eve was working at the local supermarket. That's how it was. <laughs> Although they were the first people, nobody said they were the only people. So it was like that. <laughs> so no, all jokes aside, uh, work without prayer and prayer without work is just not going to get you anywhere. One of our founding fathers, and I think it was Ben Franklin, and i not for sure, okay, had a, a little saying about that. He says, God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. And yeah, if life, I can't even imagine life without work or not necessarily work, but without a purpose. Yeah. And, and that's what, when I retired, you know, my purpose was to make my community safer and to take care of people. And that was my purpose. And then when I retired, I went, oh, so now my purpose is to help others not make the same mistakes I made to improve their lives. That's, uh, and it is very important. I've seen people that were like pretty, pretty stable, pretty tough physically. Yeah, I didn't know because I was way younger, so I didn't view the world that way. But they were like very physically stable people. And the moment they retired, they just started doing nothing, like nothing all day. And in three, four years, those people changed drastically. Like you, I understand that you worked your whole life and now you can take it easy. But if you do nothing, you end up being nothing. Yeah. You, you, you got to keep pushing. Your life will deteriorate until it's gone. And, you know, a lot of guys I know, um, they say, oh, I'm going to go golf or I'm going to go fish or I'm whatever. And, and I laugh because you'll do that for about two, three months, and then you're going to be yeah. bored out of your skull. And so have something to go to. And that doesn't mean another job necessarily, but, um, you know, like taking care of your kids or your grandkids, that can be a great purpose. 
um, taking care of your neighborhood and your community. That's even a great, that's a great purpose, you know, and that, as we, and then take care of ourselves. Yeah. Because if we're not okay, we're of no use to anybody else. You know, so these guys deteriorate. I, I have people that I've known that have turned to alcohol and become alcoholics. And I know a lot of guys that are gone. I mean, five, most guys, well, not most, but the statistics say that for the average law enforcement officer, and that's my area, so that's what I'm familiar with. Yeah. Um, five years after retirement, they're gone. That's, that. that's, that's, uh, and when you say the average, so around 50%, that's yeah. a huge percentage. Yeah. And it's scary. Um, cause I, I look at the, group at what age, I mean, I, I know that there are different States, so I assume different policies, different rules, but averagely at what age does the average police officer retires? I think 50. Yeah, that I would guess 50. Cause I, when I retired, I think I was 56. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, about 50, um, cause you can start when you're 21. Yeah. And, and they've changed the retirement now. So instead of 20-year um, retirement, most of them are 25 or 30. Um, so, yeah, about 51, 52, they can retire um, with a decent retirement. Um, a lot of them, That means that like half of them don't even see 60. That's yeah. frightening statistics. Yeah. Well, it, it, there's a lot of stress. Yeah. And that is, it's sad. Um, and you know, we've chosen to go out and do things that people don't want to see or do. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, and, and I don't care what country you're in. It's the, if you're, there's an officer, they've chosen to go out and deal with the bad people to make you safe. Um, well, no, and, if you're in North Korea, that's not the case, but everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. North, okay. North Korea and maybe China. I don't know, yeah. but yeah. But the majority of the world, that's why people are out or yeah. those officers. Um, there are people that are not good officers. And yeah, but, but they that, be that's officers, what I told you. But they're a minority. Exactly. But but they w when something happened and everybody's focusing on that, they shouldn't even be called a minority. It's less than 1%. Yeah. I, I've been in finance all my life, almost 16 years. We don't even consider anything less than three percent as a statistical error we ignore it and and the same goes for almost everything else and it's crazy and it's dangerous when people are focusing on something like that i had a had a discussion with a colleague of yours an officer uh from from germany i think he was he said there's a group of people that are very uncomfortable when they see police officers in uniforms like uh, yeah, that that group is called criminals. <laughs> you yeah. really shouldn't yeah. be considered about that because there are a lot of job opportunities. And if you decided to go with this one, you should bear the fruits of your labor. I personally have never broken any rules, any laws, and I couldn't care less if there is one, five, ten, twenty, or fifty police officers around me. I I don't care. And trust me, because uh, you know the, the the intuition of the police officer, right? Those guys, you know, they, they can see you. They don't care about you either. They care about you if you're doing something stupid. If yeah, you're not, they're... they won't even notice you because they're not there for you. They have enough on their head. They don't have to lose their time with you as well. So Absolutely. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we. it's the behavior that we look at. And that's what draws our attention. It's not, nothing else. And... Yeah, it's I, I, yeah, some of the narratives I see just drive me nuts because they're so untrue. And, you know, but if I see one that is true, man, I'm one of the first to jump in and say, hey, wait a minute here. That you, that can't, that's not the way it's done. Um, you know, and that's one thing I've discovered about the industry, so to say, is most of the time the guys are really coach or coaching or looking out um for that they don't want that because you know guy does wrong over here that makes it hard for me because it reflects on me yeah and we don't like the bad cops um and i'm i'm grateful they're a minority uh, a vast minority like you pointed out less than one percent 
Yeah, uh, in all fairness, those corrupt cops, and they do exist, they're actually mostly afraid of the real cops. Not, not They don't really take their crime partners that seriously, but they're very afraid of the normal cops because yeah. they know that they will not be tolerated. I have a fourth question. Okay. It's uh it's an interesting one. If you can give you can give a ton of advice, I'm not questioning that, but if you can give one to my audience, my audience of people that are wondering if this job is for me, if this university is for me, should I even be here? Is it the right thing? If you can give those people one advice, what will it be? Be yourself. Come from your heart and care about your community. If that, that will set you in the right frame of mind to have a successful career. And that's, that's what I learned. I, I walled myself off after a few years and I was going through the motions and doing the best I could, but it wasn't sincere for a while. So once I was, and don't be afraid to talk. Don't be afraid to talk because communication is the key to every success in this life. Whether that be relationship, job, promotions, whatever is important to you, it's all about communication. If everybody followed that advice, I think you'd put basically every lawyer and therapist out of business. So I love that. Awesome. <laughs> So and with that said, Glenn, please don't forget to, to send me all the links if you haven't already about the book, about everything. I want to put it in the description below so more, more people can see it. I will do that um, in just a little bit. Right on. Thank you for being with me. I appreciate it much, my friend. Thank you, Danny. Bye. Guys, I hope this one was useful. Please follow the channel on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Gap, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Ring the bell and all the good stuff. Have a nice week ahead and I'll see you next Sunday.